everyone, how's it going? I hope you are all enjoying your summer, but staying productive at the same time. Okay, here it is. A few of you have been asking for it. This is the how to get an agent or manager video. A lot of people always ask how to get an agent, how to get an agent, but without realizing that getting a manager, especially in the beginning, can be just as or even more important. So, without any hesitation, here we go. I'm just gonna call it now and say that this video might be one of those that runs so long that I end up having to chop it in half and spread it out over two videos because getting an agent as you probably know, is not like just the easiest thing in the world. There's a lot to tell you about and advise you about. So I will really try to keep it concise and squeeze it all into one video, but let's just jump right in and we shall see. Ah, uh, how to get representation. The question that everybody has at some point in their career, usually multiple times in their career, and seems to bring on a lot of anxiety and confusion for everyone, and myself included. Believe me, anytime that it comes to the point where it's you know, time for me to switch up my representation, just the thought of it makes me sweat. And it, I mean, it should and it shouldn't. I understand that it's a big deal. And the reason, the reason I think it gives me such like uh, anxiety is A, because you might be breaking up with an agent or a manager, which is, never fun because you have built some kind of relationship together. And um, second, because that means you're gonna have to submit to people, take meetings, you're gonna hear a lot of no's. It's just a lot of the stuff that is just not like the most enjoyable part of the business, but is totally necessary in order to move forward, you know? But it really doesn't have to be super complicated and overwhelming, so. Here's what you need to know. Before I say anything about how to get representation, you need to know the difference between an agent and a manager. Both represent you, both technically get you auditions, but a manager is more about steering your career. And um, let's say that you have both a manager and agent, you might be like, why do I need both? Agents are really just about like submitting you and getting the job and negotiating the contract and like they just wanna like get you the work, you know what I mean? A manager is more about steering your career and they're also kind of a really good go-between for you and your agent. Uh, agencies, some are very manager-like and they have really open communication and they're really <laughs> nice to their clients. And some agents are more like factories. I mean, I'll just say it. Some are more just business, business, business and they don't answer your emails or your calls, but they will talk to your manager. So sometimes you need a manager as like, an open line of communication between you and your agent. Yeah, like I said, a manager will steer your career better, help you decide what's a better way for you to go, how to market yourself better. They'll help you pick your headshots more. Like they're just more hands on and they become more of like your friend in this business. You should pay neither one, either one to represent you. You, If anyone asks you for money up front to represent you, no. And also the other big difference, except for uh, much, much smaller agencies, I mean, you might be able to find an agent right away, but usually when you are in the very beginning stages of your career, which are also called your in development, managers tend to take you on before agents do in that stage. Agents would rather see a little bit more credits. And if you submit to agents and managers, you will see that most times agents don't even reply if it's like a cold call or an email and managers do tend to bite more on that stuff because they're more open to developing somebody. But most times, agents will only take meetings if it's through a direct referral, like, an, like a, a current client of theirs or a manager. So that is why I will definitely advise you to shoot for a manager first. You can certainly submit to agents all damn day if you want. Um, I'm just letting you know not to be hurt when you don't get any replies from them, they tend not to even reply to the emails um, or answer the phone calls, so shoot for a manager. That's my advice, uh, especially when you are a newbie and you just need a little bit more hand-holding. A manager is definitely the one who's gonna do that for you. And managers tend to kind of be there a lot longer throughout your career also. Like agents, sometimes you tend to change agencies like every couple years, and your manager tends to stay more with you again because like I said, it's more of like a relationship. So before you start submitting, you need to have a couple things ready. You need to have your resume ready to go and nice and tight uh, to submit to people. And if you need help with that, uh, refer back to my video about how to create your own resume. I will link that video down below. You also need to have some headshots ready. Now, 
do not spend a ton of money on your headshots before you secure your representation because more than likely they will have you reshoot anyway. Whether they prefer a specific photographer or they meet you and they're like, this headshot doesn't really look like you or this is not what you're selling, please reshoot and make sure you get these kind of shots instead. I can almost guarantee you they're gonna ask you to reshoot. So um, don't spend $900 <laughs> on headshots before because you're gonna have to bite the bullet and do it again. And obviously don't print a ton of headshots yet either. Now you wanna make yourself a list of everyone that you're going to submit to, whether it's just managers or just agents or both. You need to have like, you know, a nice little spreadsheet list for yourself. How do you find out who to submit to? That's a good question. If you are looking for a manager, I did look on the SAG After website, I looked on backstage.com, and unfortunately, there's not a big list out there of who the great managers are. And that is because there are so many managers in LA, I mean, and in many cities, so many more than agencies. Uh, managers, it, it, a ma becoming a manager is a uh, much simpler startup and something you can do on your own and not have to jump through so many hoops and it's not so official and it's not so regulated as agencies are. So, and, and in fact, when you get a manager, you probably will not even sign a contract. So there's not like a list of managers and their contact information as there is for agents. For agents, um, I was definitely able to find a couple great lists and um, I'll, I'll put uh, that list down below. It is in order of like top agents like, you know, <laughs> uh, William Morris Endeavor, uh, CAA, all the big, big agencies, which you, you just couldn't leave those alone for right now, just tuck them away in a corner for a little bit until they come chasing after you, which they will. But start with the kind of the last ones on that list, which are the agencies that are better for newer people who are just starting out and really going for more like co-star and some guest star roles. And whatever managers I can think of, I will also list down below for you. But I say the best way and the way that I tend to find a new manager whenever I need one is to use your friends and your classmates as resources. Ask them who represents them, are they happy, and take everything they say with a grain of salt because for every management and every agency, there's gonna be people who are really happy and people who are really unhappy. It's unfortunate, but it makes sense. The truth of the matter is when you're working a lot, your agents love you and your manager loves you and they return all your calls and you're their best friend. And when you're like stale for a while, it's harder to reach them and it's just like a not the best feeling in the world. So if that's that person, then yeah, they're gonna be like, yeah, I don't know, I'm not really getting out. I don't, they don't really email me back. And then as soon as they get a couple jobs, they'll be like, yeah, I love my agency. So do ask people for referrals, um, but just like I said, take it with a grain of salt. And when you're asking these people about their managers and their representation, um, see if they are open to referring you to their manager. Not everybody is open to doing this and that's okay, but maybe there's someone in your class or in your you know, peer circle of actors or someone you meet at a workshop or I don't know, just anyone you become close with who's an actor and maybe you're not the same type as them so they would have no problem sending your information over to their manager and seeing if they'll take a meeting with you. Another way that I like to build my list of people to submit to is I like, let's say you're not in LA and you're not able to access friends or whoever might have representation, go to imdb.com and find shows that you really love or that you would really love to be on and pull some of their like co-stars and guest stars from each episode and then click and see who those people are represented by. You know what guys, I was right, I called it. This video is already getting super, super long and I wanna continue talking about this and more specifically about how to ask your friends for referrals and all that and how to start submitting to managers and agents. But right now I just wanna wrap it up. I'm gonna end this video here and then I'll keep recording and then I'll post the rest of it next week. But um, I'll just wrap it up by saying agents and managers are different. I would shoot for a manager right now. Doesn't necessarily mean that that manager or that agent got that person that job but at least that means they're working with someone who is working, you know what I mean? So that's a good way to make a list as well. So make your list and I will see you next week. Okay, bye.